I think that, you know, uh, people become a little more complacent under Democrats. And I think actually under Trump, we saw a lot of left organizing happen because of how uh, uh, wretched Trump was. And, you know, I'm not going to I'm not making the accelerationist argument. I don't want these things to happen. But you saw a lot of like DSA membership spiked enormously the day Trump was elected. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen more, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, leftist uh, candidates come up under Trump. Uh, I don't think that we saw that uh, uh, under Obama. And I would also say that the election right after Obama, you know, was Bernie versus Hillary. And that was a primary that Hillary won. But you know, Bernie, Bernie did better in the pri in this primary than he did in the last one. Well, I mean, he won a lot more states in the last one. But, they had, but, I, but I would just point out. He won California and bigger that, states in this uh, one. Okay. Although, he got again, one more a, votes. A, a, more a like lot fewer, I think, no matter how you slice it. I mean, he had, there was a moment where he seemed to have momentum mm -hmm. to do better. You know, that I mean, he, he won he, the first three states and he won and, uh, California and all that. In, but yeah, in, in 2016. But they have a but uh, but look, here's what happened under Obama. Occupy Wall Street happened under Obama mm -hmm. and was quashed by a centrist by by yes. centrist Obama. Of course. Of course, it was quashed by him. Uh, that, that's not the question. If, you know, we're not talking about is Obama good or is Obama disgusted? Of sure. course, Obama is disgusted. Of course, he'd quash it just like a, just like a Republican president would have quashed it. The question is. I thought what I thought we were talking about. I mean, is there was happened. Occupy ICE under Trump. There is, you know, there's uh, there's but, but so much. Uh, there, were, there were there were gigantic there were gigantic protests uh, at that uh, on J twenty like the day that he was elected. I'm like Congress. We had uh, the uh, first Bernie Sanders campaign winning twenty two states. I mean, that's a lot more than we had under Trump. You know, I and, and you know, I I, I ultimately uh, uh, you might be right about this. Uh, uh, you might be right about that. I I maybe just uh, uh, am forgetting things that happened under Obama, but I just I do feel like there was a lot of energy uh, uh, that got moved to the left, and it made people examine the things that they believe uh, that Trump got elected. And I think that we saw, like I said, there was a huge spike in DSA membership, and there were a lot of there was a lot of organizing uh, that did happen under trump uh, and i think a lot of people moved further left under trump and that's just you know i i well, guess i would say it's anecdotal but uh i do yeah. think that we saw more people move left under trump okay i don't think that's true i think the opposite's true okay you think more people moved right under trump i think that more people uh moved to uh to uh, to liberalism, to uh, to becoming obsessed with Russia, uh, to all that bullshit under Trump. I think that there was more left wing uh, activity and opening that happened. Like I think that there are vict I think that there are strides forward that the left made during the Trump years that continued to happen and built up on themselves uh, under uh, under. Uh, sorry, during the uh, Obama years that continued to, to build up on themselves during the Trump years. But I think the basics, I think, again, Occupy Wall Street, Black Lives Matter, the first Sanders campaign, the squad. I mean, being Black Lives Matter, like, really took off Life under Trump. And, and, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Black Lives Matter, like, really, you know, it started under Obama, but it's, you know, still the basic same yeah, thing Black about, Lives you know, police, uh, uh, you know, killing uh, African-American people. But it, we can't we, we can also notice that it, like, became a lot bigger uh, and became a much larger movement under Trump. Um, you know, I would actually argue that we saw more Republicans become Democrats under Trump. And like some of those people are the ones you're referring to uh, with being Russiagate obsessed. Uh, I think a lot of people who were Obama uh, friendly, uh, people who maybe didn't think that much about politics, who were just sort of like young voters. I think a lot of them are now DSA members uh, when they were just sort of like soft Obama voters for those eight years. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and I think a lot of that happened while Trump was still president when Bernie was running the first time. I think that as you far mean while as, Obama was still president. Yeah, sorry, Jesus. Sure. Uh, while Obama was still president, you know, when Bernie ran, uh, the uh, too many names going on here. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, well uh, Mick, you know, when, when, Mick, when, Bernie, when Bernie ran the first time, but I think as far as what's changed under Trump, I think that for every soft Bernie voter who voted for who joined DSA and I'm a member of DSA. I like DSA, mm -hmm. but this is also an organization that would like maybe just now is starting to get up to the point where it fill a football stadium. Sure. I think that for every soft Bernie voter who voted, who joined DSA, there are 20 soft Bernie voters who became insufferable Russia gate, uh, you know, DSA. <laughs> 
You might be right. You know, I, I would I, I would love to find what the polling looks like, but uh, uh, I would say that I think that there are more people who would define themselves as a socialist uh, uh, under the Trump years than there were under the Obama years. That, that's true. I, I mean, I, I think you can certainly look at public opinion on a variety of issues and say that you have a lot more social justice sentiment today than in the past. But it, again, I think the causal chain is a little tough because like Ben said, some of the groundwork for this was laid during the Obama years. I tend to agree with you, Jack, that I do think there's an element of the reaction to a president that the media is actually covering in an oppositional way mm-hmm. and to uh, obstructionism on the or I wouldn't say obstructionism, actually, like a desire to do bad things on the Republican end that the media, again, is covering in a more oppositional way. I think a lot of people tune into politics in a way that they don't when there's a Democrat in power and the media is giving them a pass on a lot of the day. Wait, can I, I have a question. We have a a good question. Was was like on behalf of the intelligence community and shit like that. It wasn't like, you know, look at all of this, this like terrible stuff they're doing on labor regulations. You know, kids in cages to me is an example of something. I feel like there was a lot of popular energy around uh, reproductive rights. I feel like there was a lot of popular energy around. So, I think that there are some, you know, even the Supreme Court justice debate was Mm -hmm. something that there was a lot of popular energy around. So I tend to think that there is energy that can be channeled and diverted into social justice causes because people do Mm -hmm. generally agree with us on most of the issues because they're popular issues Mm -hmm. that does get sent into some of this bad Russiagate stuff. I agree with Ben. Like, there is a big push to try to take that energy and neuter it from the establishment wing of the party. But I think that there's an opportunity to take the growth in the indivisibles of the world and right. make those people radicalized and, and get them to see that under the Biden administration, yes. a lot of this stuff also happens. I, I, but I think I, that I, that's one of the reasons we've got to really figure out the best way to exercise our power and show that to people. I, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, uh, and I would just point to, you know, kids in cages uh, uh, as a sort of abject example of this. There were kids in cages under Obama, and that was only covered in ProPublica, and people didn't particularly talk about it very much until there were kids in cages under Trump. And then they started passing around the pictures of kids in cages that were in cages under, under Obama. Obama right. You know, so it was only shrieked about it, only was animating for people it was only radicalizing for people uh because it was something that the media was uh, uh, focused on now we're under biden um and already these kids in cages are being recontextualized as migrant uh, overflow facilities for children where they're being taught and you know now we're seeing things like uh people are passing around pictures of the um you know migrant prisons uh, migrant child prisons and saying like look how nice they are under biden and they turn out to be pictures from when it was under trump and so i guess this is one of the these elements where I, you know, we have to, as left media, sort of like, you know, grasp onto this and try to show to people, but we aren't getting that mainstream media, you know, sort of support yeah. in that way. Like already these are being recontextualized in ways that uh, um, make people less radicalized about them. Yeah.